It is important to be able to sort useful criticism from the other kind. Often we need to do the sorting out for ourselves without the benefit of a public vindication. As artists, we are far more able to do this sorting than people might suspect. Pointed criticism, if accurate, often gives the artist an inner sense of relief. Useful criticism ultimately leaves us with one more puzzle piece for our work. A useless criticism, on the other hand, leaves us with a feeling of being bludgeoned. As a rule, it is withering and shaming in tone, ambiguous in content, personal, inaccurate, or blanket in its condemnations. There is nothing to be gleaned from irresponsible criticism. You are dealing with an, an inner child. Artistic child abuse creates rebellion, creates block. All that can be done with that with abusive criticism is to heal from it. Preach! I think I recall that one from last year, even. We were around the same time. You were talking about Peter Bay, and I was thinking about, you know, when you make a mistake, he does this to you. And it's like, really? <laughs> that is not creative criticism. It creates rebellion in you. That's right. Yeah. All right, y'all, welcome to Warm Up and Hiring with Mars. Um, I got a timer set for 30 minutes, so we'll, we'll check in after that about how we're feeling and everything. Um, Liz, do you want to get a horn, or are you still working on things? I gotta do the dishes, I'll join in, in like 10 minutes. Okay, you sure you don't want to just, or? I feel like I should, I'll just finish it up. Okay, cool. Yeah, but I'll listen and I'll bundle up. All right, no problem. All right, so let's, um. Put down our coffee cups for a sec. <laughs> I feel like the most the most important fundamental to start with is like the body. So it's just up, up, horns down for a sec. <clears throat> and we're just gonna start with some gentle kind of pulses at the knees. And as you do this, notice that you can let your shoulders go. There's an impetus to your shoulders. Yeah, beautiful. Relax your armpits, relax your wrists, your elbows, your neck. Start to get in touch with your breathing apparatus. Breathing laterally, side, opening the sides. Breathing from the back. Notice any adjustments in the spine that want to happen. If you can find that bobblehead feeling, Be pretty amazing for setting us up to be relaxed at the horn later. <laughs> Some chop flops, good, good place to start. And notice the utter ease and non concern with which you chop flop. That's going to be our North Star for how we produce tone. Side swings, keeping those loose shoulders. And for extra credit, you might tune into this feeling of like a barber pole from your perineum up through your spine up to the top of your head. You're just rotating around that barber pole. Breathing and expanding around it, releasing and relaxing around it. Simultaneously summoning the uprightness and the feeling of down and surrender to gravity. A couple chop flops as we do this. Beautiful. And letting that come to its own stopping point. You might play now as you chop flop with a, a light clamping of the lips together and notice what it does to the pitch. Just very light. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Raise the pitch, right? Cool. So we're going to call that the smush. The smush is when you smush more of the inside of your lips together. The clamp is going to be more on the outside of the lips. We'll get into that shortly. The smush is one of our tools for 
getting high at the horn. So let's grab our horns now. Nice, you know, relaxed but firm grip on it. Start to explore the space that we have with the instrument, how we relate with the weight, how much ease we can cultivate in our holding of the instrument. I like to imagine that there's like this line coming from the base of my spine up through my lats, out through my arms. It's actually holding the horn more than just stopping at the shoulders. Oh, let's take the horns above us and stretch up. Oh, and relax. And we're ready to sit and chill now. How'd that feel? Feels good. Yeah. Cool. So what I like to do next, I'm not too much of a buzzer right now, is what I call the wiggle warm-up. Again, remember that zero pressure, zero expectation thing we did with the top lot. We're just gonna put the horn on the face, wiggle the valve before we play, and see what comes out. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. All of you were able to release your corners while you did that. The corners are an overused part of the horn anatomy that we often have. Let's just for contrast, pull our corners out. Yeah, really firm them against the face and pull them out. Mm, oh my God. And notice what it does the rest of your anatomy on the side. Yeah, so what we're gonna do now, Put, put a finger on our lips to anchor the middle of it and then sigh again, releasing the corners. Beautiful, none of you had problems releasing your corners. Yeah, all, all you were able to release your corners. So you know what it's like to choose to release your corners. Now all we're gonna do, we're not gonna try and make any sound, we're not gonna make any embouchure, is we're gonna do the same thing with our, we're not even gonna do it with horns yet. Just put a mouthpiece to anchor and just sigh around the mouthpiece. Beautiful, happy, relaxed corners and puff cheeks. You can, you can puff your cheeks a little more. There you go, great. Let's do the same thing with the horn. We're just using the mouthpiece to pin the lips and sigh around it. Yeah, notice if you start to blow rather than release. It's about total passive exhalation. Yeah, nice, Tom, nice, everybody. Beautiful. Notice any tendency to grip the corners and try to start to make an embouchure? Yeah, it's there. And we don't need it. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, so now what we're gonna do is um, just see, again, you can do F1, two, and three might be the easiest. Just see if you can get any kind of vibration out while prioritizing keeping the corners relaxed. <laughs> Practice, it's not to be practiced for 20, 30 minutes a day, but a few minutes a day over the course of a year is going to dramatically reset your understanding of how to use or not use your corners. Once the other factors come into place for high range, you're going to be able to understand how to ascend on the instrument. <laughs> Now we're just warming up. So I like to crowdsource a little bit. Um, who wants to do some just simple mountains now? Some long tones. No, what, what would you like to do? Oh, uh, I'm more of a stream guy. You're more of a stream guy, great. <laughs> what about you? I do all, so we'll just wherever we start, we'll start. All right, great. So let's take some, um, let's take some mountains on the F horn whatever harmonic you feel most comfortable with, 
and um, we're just gonna take them in like whatever, whatever. You can do it in your own rhythm, your own breath cycle. You do some stream, preferably surrounding F-ish. You do whatever you want, surrounding F horn. Let's just do it for about you know, 30 seconds, 40 seconds on your own rhythm. to the um, E horn now, mountain streams and whatever. Yeah, fully relaxed. Yeah. yeah, but if I can, that means that I'm in marching in the direction that you're preaching. Here. Exactly, you and march in the what direction. I want to see how that affects me. I, I got to tell y'all, last year, and Chris knows this. In November, in October, I had an accident. Uh, I have a McCall, <laughs> and she's a real sweet bird. And I went to give her a kiss, and she grabbed me here and oh. this lift. Oh. Eleven stitches later, six weeks of non-playing, and so it's still. Affected. It still has a, a knot, a little bitty knot in there, it's still numb on one side. But over the year, trying to figure out how to make, uh, playing principal horn, trying to make this figure out, and I'm not convinced I found the perfect place to make everything work like it did sure. before. Sure. I mean, I'm making it work, but I'm trying to see if there might be some other approach. Even yeah, now, or some flavors or ingredients to add. Yeah, exactly. And, and if this, at least this might be something that I can incorporate or you know work around and see if I can make it happen. You know, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. The doctor's very optimistic. Ah, oh, it's gonna be fine. Just give it some time. You'll rub it and all this. I'm like, yeah, you don't do what I do for a living. Right. So, yeah. you know, other than switching the tube, I thought you know. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to let y'all know that I am experimenting constantly. You know, yeah. Trying to, uh, Figure it out. I know I've lost some range stuff, but uh, mm -hmm. I can work through that. So, anyway, so this is great to have an idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to cover a bunch of stuff. So, so <coughs> yeah, the brief answer to the question is no. Let's yeah. go use a normal, comfortable playing mechanism and, and move in the direction of how dead, how relaxed, right. how low motor rock can I do. For this next one, we're going to do G flat horn and let's warm up our listening a little bit so that we're really. Um, finding our way with our intonation, maybe using our hands rather than our lips to adjust intonation and seeing if we make something that we personally find pleasant in this space. G flat horn. <laughs>
flat horn? G flat? Thumb, uh, thumb one, th thumb two, three? Uh -huh. Horn in G flat? Uh-huh. Is, is, like, is that, that this B flat? B? F horn, flat F horn would be flat. F horn, and so G flat is a half step above F horn? G flat. Okay, cool. Right. I, yeah, I've never heard that before. I just, because I'm like, oh, I was playing no, 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 like, no, no, I'm just yeah. Yeah. well, because also I think like, you know, B horn, B flat horn, A horn, A flat horn, G horn, G flat horn. One, That's two, right. Three. And then there's an octave above that. But. Wait, no. Yeah, this you're right. B, this is B flat. F B horn, flat, A, A, A flat. Oh. <laughs> Okay. G. G. That's flat. C flat. That's C flat horn okay. with yeah. on the F. Yeah. 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 I'm thinking. Okay, we're doing B flat. Okay. I was yeah. like, we're playing A flats. What's going on? Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Great. So I want to introduce you to just a couple range of motion things now, um, and we're gonna revisit this. So don't worry if you don't get it right now. But we're gonna do the roll in. Like Chris is hiding his vermilion border, so he already knows what's up. We're just gonna kind of make the space in front of our teeth. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, great. Y'all are y'all are pros. Literally are. Um, <laughs> so now let's the, the opposite of that movement is gonna be called the roll out, which is like this. Mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm And more flesh as you can. Yeah, exactly. Mmm. So obviously let's buzz like this. Are your teeth open or closed? There's about um, half an inch, quarter of an inch. It makes a difference. Quarter inch. You can close them. You can close them as well. No big deal. Yep. So did anybody buzz a high note? No. Correct. All right. Now let's roll in and don't get too because you're not probably ready for that. It's gonna be. This one was like big air, right? This was like river air. I'm gonna call the roll in air sewing needle air. So it's like the size and intensity of a sewing needle. And we're gonna try to get that feeling in front of your teeth. Beautiful. Now, is there, so when I do that, um, air pockets, wanna form above? Love it. You want that? That's a natural, okay. um, your body's being efficient with allowing the lips to roll and supporting it with mnemonically rather than muscularly, right. with air rather than with muscles. Yeah. So, did anybody buzz a low pitch? Mm -hmm. Ah, we found something interesting. <laughs> so <laughs> let's um, let's do another. Let's just do a, a second here. Hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. And notice the tendency. A few of you are pulling your corners out as you're rolling in. That's actually going to be stretching the lips away from the aperture rather than towards the aperture. So as we roll in, exactly, it's more like that. Mm. In situ. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really nice. Excellent, excellent. Oh, uh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Get a little cramp. <laughs> Just a little bit of jaw moving. Get it out. So the way that... Um, Y'all might be ready for this actually. If you just let's roll in our lips and just put the mouthpiece over those rolled in lips and feel how weird that feels. You're not, no? Yeah, are, some of you already made an amateur. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah, we're not gonna play. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> just roll them in, put them over. All right, relax. And now let's roll out our lips, put the horns up. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And try putting it so that the mouthpiece is inside, yeah, super einsetzen. And you might get a low note to come out, especially if you angle the horn up. Nobody got a high note, that's for sure. <laughs> so one of the things that we do after you get comfortable with that way of playing, so I practice on that set almost daily, but I drag it up. So it's like swinging a baseball bat with weights on it. So I learned how to play high on that set, and then that gives me tremendous efficiency and control when I go back to my normal set. Okay, let's, um, there's one more mechanism that I want to invoke, which is the tongue. So just show of hands, who uses like a tongue arch kind of concept consciously to adjust the pitch? Yeah, you use, yeah. Great, so we already know, let's just sing, ah, ye, ah, ye, ah. Uh, yeah. 
And now let's plant our hands here, fix our chins, and try singing it without moving our chins. Great. So that's um, not quite going to take us all the way to the top of the horn. So now let's go. Yeah. You feel that hiss in the front of the mouth? Yeah. And the, and the tip of the tongue is anchored to the right behind the bottom teeth. Yeah, yeah. So that's that cool, fast, compressed, and not, it's not a lot of air that's moving when we do that, right? It's like you got your finger over the garden hose. That's what we want. So what we're gonna do now, um, I learned this from Claude Gordon, it's called tongue control embouchure. And we're just gonna take the, uh, do it on the B flat horn. And we're just gonna practice moving that ah, ye, ah, ye, but we're gonna do it on. We're trying to get our tongue to do as much of the work as possible. So one, two, three. choking feeling. But none of you have this problem, I don't think, but uh, people that are more high range challenged often do. I feel so, that sometimes. Yeah. So, you know, kind of like starting a note, um, you know, typically tonguing with the tip of your tongue, is it tonguing and then putting it back down there, or would you recommend like going to an anchor tonguing sort of set? That You might experiment with anchor tonguing and see how it frees you up. Yeah. Um, and I, I have that 90 minute high range articulation class um, in our classroom um, that talks about the three different kinds of tonguing that you can use. 
But you're saying that choking feeling really can come from the, the, the tongue retracting. It's from the tongue retracting, chucking off the thing, and then, and then there's all this air in the front that makes it harder, all the space in the front that makes it actually harder to match the resonant frequency of the mm -hmm. sound and get the right air speed. And, but then it's like, what you think is the mechanism to play higher is retracting tongue, so you retract your tongue even higher, right. it makes it even harder, so it creates a negative feedback loop. Do you play, is your setup, do you have an anchor tongue all the time? Nope. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm kind of haphazard. <laughs> it's a good question though. All right, so let's now see if we can use this um, tonguing, the tongue movement principle to cover a little bit more range. Before that, let's roll in. In front of the teeth, yeah, good catch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now let's see if we can keep that lip position, but way less muscular effort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now we're talking. So all we want really is just enough that we can resist the air flow as we try to make the tiniest squeak. So I'm gonna squeak and then Peter squeaks. Yeah, so back off the air and resist it a little bit more with the lip. Yeah, see how that was better? You remember the part that you liked the most about that? Um, there's, I didn't like any of it. Oh, okay. So this is this is principle. This is another big, big principle of our learning and how to master the high range in a very short amount of time, or you know, to unlock more range, is to find what you like. Because when you find what you like, then you create a particular um, neurochemical cocktail of the things that are best for learning. So if you don't like something, very often that, that's just a discouragement, negative condition, negative reinforcement. What we want is positive reinforcement. That's the fastest way to learn. That's how we train animals, etc. So what you want is to find something that you liked about it. For example, I love the moments when you had a pure high tone. That was my favorite part. And I would encourage you to remember that. We'll try it again in a second. Make it even more vivid in your memory after it happens, just the part that you like. And then, and then replay it and be like, body, can I get more of that? Can I get more of that? Can I get, that would be so awesome. I love that so much. I would love more of that. And that kind of practice tends to create faster um, neuroplasticity. You want to try it? What'd you like about it? Oh, that one was consistent. You like the consistency? Yeah. Great. And did you like that it was a high, easy pitch too? Yeah, it came out pretty easy. Yeah, so let's remember to remember what it sounded like and how it felt and how much you liked it. Let's give it a little love, give it a little fertilizer, you know? You want to try? Amazing, yeah. What'd you like about it? Well, what I didn't like is that I had three different places of air coming through <laughs> yeah. the center. Cool. Which I, I think we tried again. What did I ask you? Just what I like about it. That's right. I actually, it happened. Yeah. I got yeah. it to work. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're focusing on the problem, generally you're going to amplify that. Yeah. And there's this critical window right after you did the thing where it's living fresh in your short term memory. So it's three to five seconds for your short term memory. That's it. What we want to do is we want to take the stuff from the short term memory that we liked and start to pack it into our long term memory. So it's a very critical window that three to five seconds after we do something to harvest as much as we can from it. You'll remember what you didn't like, I promise. <laughs> yeah. But try it again. See if you can focus on what you like. Amazing. What'd you like? It's a consistent stream. It's a consistent pitch. Yeah. Yeah. It was high. Yeah. Cool. I loved all of that as well. So let's remember what that's like. And I'm going to cue you to imagine it happening, but imagining it happening lighter and smaller, like that was a fortissimo squeak. We want like a piano. Beautiful, beautiful. That's the kind of feeling that we're going for with this. this it doesn't matter where it comes from then? Not at all. Okay. Yeah. Are you squeaking out the side? Yeah. Totally natural. <laughs> yeah, totally natural. Mm hmm Great. What did you like about it? It came out. <laughs> what else did you like? Let's get specific. Let's find something to love about it. Uh, 
I think my, I love my principal goal was for a sound to make, like, without a lot of air. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have to use a ton of air. Yeah, you were backing off the air. You had a consistent high pitch. Um, you were able to keep your lips rolled in against the air stream. I liked all of that. It seemed like it was coming out of the center. You were really working and diligently persevering for it. So all those are things to, like, pull out and pack into your, you know, sense of creation. All right, great. Now let's... Extremely taxing if you do too much of it. So don't do too much of it. Five minutes a day maximum. Every other day even better. All right, let's get back to using the tongue now in our normal way of playing. That's 30 minutes. So we got about 15 minutes to keep this going. So 10 minutes so we can have five to wrap up. And uh, let's just start with the, the G flat horn. And we're gonna do some octave. And do a few and see if you can get that tongue to really contribute. And 
time, maybe just some low register um, Yogi's Choice moment to play in the low range. Squeak through the horn without creating a full seal. <laughs> cool. All right, and now I'm gonna play low, and each of you, I'm gonna do. We're all gonna do Yogi's Choice low playing, but we're gonna enter one at a time and try and riff on what the other person is doing. of the lips and just really feel those mechanisms working together to support us. So I wish that I had, um, my favorite thing still is kind of like octave leaps, but feel free if you want to do something else. I'm just going to kind of go up by octaves and um, we go, we, um, easier, um, easiest, down, and we'll just go up a half step. So we'll do three on each one, go up a half step. And um, let's start on... C flat horn in the staff. your primary feeling right now. Yeah, I'll start. Mine is uh, joy. I'll go that way. Pressure. Pressure. Excited. Excited. Contentment. Contentment. Unstable. Unstable. Cool. Not in a negative way. Can be negative. It's like a it's like a neutral way. Cool. <laughs> We're learning unstable. Yeah. 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 yeah maybe like disoriented or yeah. interested. Yeah, yeah, cool. It's all it's all welcome. So CPTSD is the um, byproduct of repeated emotional neglect, and unfortunately, the way we've been brought up, we tend to emotionally neglect our musical selves by not checking in about how they're feeling about what we're doing and how it's feeling what we're doing. So just a little every five seven minutes, just check in. Hey, buddy, how you feeling? <laughs> it's welcome. You feel sad. You feel confused. You feel shamed. 
Testing. Complex post traumatic stress disorder. That's what, as the, versus PTSD, it's like a bomb goes off, one thing happens, your father beats you once, you get sexually molested, that's PTSD. CPTSD is the accumulation of many small moments of emotional neglect or abuse. Like a dad that was not beating you but didn't hug you ever, exactly. or something like that. And that exactly. yeah. Three. Yeah, or a teacher that criticized you but never asked you how you felt, never made space for your feelings. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. So we're on the G flat horn now. You take care of yourselves. train the tongue to arch forward and up as we ascend. We covered the tongue movement, tongue controlled embouchure. We covered the roll and the squeak. And when you put it on the horn, the squeal. When notice my cheeks puffed and allowing pneumatic control of the embouchure rather than just muscular control of the embouchure. So that was a lot of shit that we just covered. Let's all play an F, a note on the F horn harmonic series, Yogi's Choice, and just kind of own, and let this be just like a, a sinking in feeling. We'll do three of them. So exhale all your air, and we'll take a full breath in and do it together. Inhale. Come. <laughs> 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 <laughs>